everyone. I'm Kim Schwar, I'm CTO of DC Music, and I'm really excited to be here today to talk about a topic that is often overlooked. We talk a lot about like UIs, performance, um, even haptics and some things, but we don't talk much about sound. Yet, I know it can help you transform your app from being great to being a memorable one. So before I jump in, I kind of want to play a game together. I want to play a few sounds, and you have to guess what it is, OK? You can, in the audience, you can just throw answers online. You can write it in the chat. You guys ready? No, 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 no. I know it's getting late. Lunch is coming. Like, are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, baby, let's go. OK, we start with the first sound. OK, any clues? Hey, you guys are way too good. Yes, this is a microwave. Great. Um, second sound. Dude, uh, half of the audience was, OK, chill mode. Yes, this is Netflix indeed. OK, last one. OK, there's some serious track in the audience. I like it. Yes, it's Duolingo, or maybe this Duolingo. I don't know. Anyway, um, you saw how the connection was really quick. And I think what I want to highlight here is the way the human brain works is we process audio much, much faster than we process video, visuals. That means that when you use this and you pair it with the visual in your app, you can um, have, uh, make it feel like it's faster. And also, you connect to the user at the lower emotional level, because there's less filters in that sense. And so there's a lot of different ways you can use sound in your app. One of the ways is micro interaction. It's those little tiny sound and, um, and confirmation that helps you understand really and, and feel the interface, right? Fuck. Uh, OK, I should have turned out. <laughs> this is uh, embarrassing. OK, so I don't know. Not the right time. <clears throat> <laughs> OK, this is embarrassing. So um, I was saying micro interaction. And um, the beauty of <laughs> this is going to be long. The, the beauty of this is that um, what the fuck? Is this real or is it not? Maybe I'm kidding. Hey, hey nobody called me. I don't know if you guys saw the trick coming or not. But the idea is there was no visuals. You didn't saw anything, but yet you could picture in your mind exactly what was going on. And I think it's the beauty of sound is with that just seeing, you can still be there. And it really works on the imagination and, again, connects at a deeper level. So based on what you want to do with your app, there's a lot of like, added value you can have. So for example, apps like Duolingo or Learning App um, can help build the habits. Um, I think those small rewards help build daily retention, and then sound really adds to that a lot. So that's one way to use sound. Another way, it's more around the surrounding, giving that ambience. Um, that's kind of like uh, ambient sound, setting the scene, uh, whether it's like a meditation app or more of a game-related application. The last way you can use sound, I'm going to talk about it, but I won't give you a code example, is what, what's called earcons. We talk a lot about icons and visuals for app, but the way you build your brand um, audio identity is also super important. You saw it with Netflix, um, HBO has it, McDonald's. When you open your Mac, you get a specific sound that gets you, OK, I want to build some stuff right now. And so it's really those investments that helps you get to the next level. So now. At the end of the day, sound is really the glue that puts everything together and make it, makes it all current. It's this little pinch of salt that you add when you finish cooking. Um, so don't forget about it. The one thing I'm a bit um, worried about is I, well, I was here last year. I gave a talk about building a game in React Native. And I finished on the topic that we got to get our stuff together for, for audio. It was, there was not really like a reliable option. And I think the community kind of took it personally. And just a few months later, we had not only one, but two very solid solutions to fix this. So I'm really excited to work you through how to use it today. To do so, I figured I'll do something a bit original and give you a basic example. And we're going to complexify it together. 
when I was in college, um, I built uh, this website that's called Je suis une chèvre, which means I'm a goat. So here's the trick. I want to give you a cultural background. In the US or in, the, in English, when you say you're a goat, you're the greatest of all time. In French, when you say you're a goat, it means like you're pretty dumb. So it's the exact opposite. And so the way this website worked was pretty simple. There was a goat, you click on it, ah. you hear a goat sound. OK, I want to turn down so otherwise everybody's going to go nuts. And so I said, great, I built that 10 years ago. I think this can go universal. And it sure can. So Expo released Expo Audio the same way they did for video. They branched out of Expo AV and did something with a more modern API. So the way you would use this, you instantiate it with um, the hook. You pass it like a sound. I hope that soon we'll be able to pass multiple sounds so you can sync on the lowest level. And then you just press play, which is great. But you know, there's this one thing when, when you press, uh, you gotta wait for the sound to finish to trigger it again. And that's kind of bothersome. So the good news with um, um, Expo Audio is it gives you um, instant uh, um, feedback on the states, so you can get that synchronously. So you can say, like, is the player playing? If it's not, let's start it. And if it is, then let's start at zero. So you can, you can start having some fun, right? Um, I'm sure you didn't expect that this talk to go this way, but I'm not over. I'm not over. Now, I said in the beginning that sound is linked with interface and those really worked in together. So the idea is really to build them and for them to feed each other. So one way we could do that, we can use native wind that works with the animated on the back end. So that when we press the goat, uh, it would kind of animate uh, the same thing. So here's the challenge. You might have not noticed it, but timing is everything. What's happening here is I'm pressing the goat and the sound uh, happens when I'm pressing out. And so I don't know if you ever touched a goat in real life, but it would not wait for you to release the finger to make some sounds, right? It's little small details that makes things more realistic, and so you connect to how we are in real life. And so the way you would do that, very simple, it's on pressing. But again, you have to think about the use case. Maybe you want to create, trigger the sound when you press in, in which case you need to change stuff. In this case, uh, great. That works. Amazing. Now, coding is not everything. We're talking about sound here, right? So you might have a very performant sound, it triggers at the exact same time, so, but you're still late. Look at the sound. For example, this is um, the waveform of the, the, the goat sample, and at the beginning there was this little like white note, like silence, that even if you triggered it on time, it's not gonna really be hearable until a little bit of time. If you wanna loop it, there's some trailing white uh, spaces that you need to remove too. Also, at OGT Play, we build like a, we, I'm building a music game, so there's some differences between MP3 and WAV files. The MP3 needs to be um, uh, decompressed, so if you play multiple tracks, some WAV and some MP3, that won't be in sync. So there's a lot of details that needs to go beyond the code, but how audio is built and how it looks. But let's get back on track. Um, let's spice up a bit the example and then turn the knob a little bit. And to do that, I'm gonna talk about the second option we have. It's a lot lower level, but it's a lot more powerful. So bear with me. And it's called React Native Audio API. It's brought by um, the, a team at uh, Software Mansion. And it's based on a trend that I'm really excited about. I think you heard um, Evan talk about it earlier uh, today. We're saying, like, bring in the web. Everybody benefits from it. William has been a great lead in that, too, with um, bringing things that we know and works in the web and bring that universally instead of creating yet a new paradigm. And so that's exactly what they've done with the Web Audio API. So we get a lot of the web stuff for free. As we go through the example, I want you to do a quick mind shift because the way this API is based is, is, is very different. So forget about your developer mindset. Put your, your dev, like, um, producer shoes. We're in the studio and we're working with nodes, okay? So imagine like you have physical boxes and you're connecting them together with wires. That's exactly what we're gonna do, but with development. This is an example of like just a UI built on the, the audio API, but at the end of the day, that's what you're doing in your code. So for the very basic example we have, we'll need to take the audio file, extract the buffer from it, put it to buffer source, and then connect that to a gain node. It's like a volume knob, And then put that to the, to the output. So there's input, there's destination, and you can do everything, all the jazz you want in between. <clears throat> and you can also have other inputs, so the microphone or other outputs. 
you get it. So in this example, you see it's a lot more wordy, so you create your context, you get the buffer, and then when you click, you instantiate the player node, and then you connect it to the output. There's some weird uh, details. For example, um, you need to instantiate the node every time you play a sound, so when it's finished, it dies. Don't ask me why. I didn't write the specs, but this is how it works. And um, voila. We have the exact same example. So you might be wondering, Kim, like, what the fuck, dude? You 10 times the X, it's 10 times longer, and it's the exact same thing? It's like, hey, bear with me, guys. Let's, let's, let's continue that direction, and let's see if we can improve it a bit. So one idea we could do is maybe work on the playback speed to make it play a bit um, uh, faster or slower based on where the user is. <laughs> Voila, so we can, you, you know, we start to get some fun, okay? Uh, it gets a little bit weirder as we go, and I'm not over. But um, I want to use this as an opportunity to talk about speed versus speech. At Odyssey Music, we're building Odyssey Play. It's, a, it's an app to learn to play the saxophone and all wind instruments. And so when the user goes to the app, we give them uh, uh, instructions and we teach them how to play songs. So there's feedback on the songs and the notes they should play. And sometimes part of the song are harder than others, so you might want to loop in those specific things and practice and you want to lower the pitch and the, like, lower the BPM so you can have more time to practice, memorize the notes, and then eventually you'll gradually get up to the speed. So as much as it was fun in the good example to be like weird low and high pitch, for us, we need to stay on the same musically, right? We need to preserve the pitch. And the beauty of the <clears throat> React Native Audio API is you just have to turn this um, um, parameter on which is very different because it works in native, but it turns out that the mobile API didn't implement this, so it wouldn't work. So what they've done is they use Sig SignalSmith Audio, and so for us, it's transparent. And I, th I think this is beautiful because not only we're bringing web pirating to mobile, but on top of it, we're improving the experience on the web as well, which I think is, is, pretty, is pretty exciting. But let's spice this up a bit. I don't know if you've ever been to a party where someone don't know really how to DJ, and so the way you would do that is you go the knob volume and you go up and down like this. And so we can actually program this. The way you would do it is you do an oscillator. It's kind of waveform that goes like this, and um, you can change the frequency so it goes faster or slower, and you basically connect the gain node to it, and it would make the volume go up and down, and that a different uh, length. So the way it will look, it's pretty straightforward in the code. You just con create an oscillator and connect things together so that um, as you go up, you can kind of like Skrillex uh, stutter sounds, but that could connect to anything. Here it was volume, but that could be also a low pass filter. <laughs> Voilà. So there's a lot of things you can do. You get it. I'm not going to run over. I think we heard enough goat sound for this day, for the sake of this today, this presentation. Um, but the beauty of this is it's very performance. You have a lot of freedom in what you can connect. And I want to finish um, the code examples with um, looping the circle. I talked about a lot about like how sound can help the UI, but the UI can also help the sound. So for example, here. If we think about the second example I gave about ambient sound and you know giving this context, we can add some like ops sounds, a bit of context, you know, we're in the ops. And so you can use React Native um, Audio API to get the data about the audio and build some kind of visualization on top of it. This one is very basic, but you could use that say in the AI app, AI app. As you talk and as you receive stream, you might use shaders or connect that to fancy like Skia and really have more of a tangible, like uh, real experience. I never thought I would say AI on top of a mountain sound, but here I am. Great. So if you, let me stop the sound. Great. So um, last year I talked about Melo Skia, I faked a lot of the audio in the demo. So we worked a lot with uh, the software management team to improve that, so feel free to go check it out on GitHub if you want to be curious and look at real example code that works um, to ma make it uh, work. So now it powers. This sound comes from React Native API. It's a synthesizer we built. It works across um, native and web. Um, so have fun, get in there, and build uh, what you need. OK, so let's take a step back and think about what we just talked about. 
Audio and you React Native, if you have simple use case, you just want to play sound or record audio, if you want some basic control and, and cross-platform support, Expo Audio is great at this. Um, thank you, Alan Hook, for like, um, creating and, and updating this, and Expo for supporting this. Now, if you want to go a bit local and go deeper, if you have very high performance needs like I do in, in our app, you can use React Native Audio API, and this really gets a whole step further, where you can use audio synthesis effect. It's really low latency. And thank you so much, Michelle Sek, for creating this, and all the team, the Michelle and Masek, for like, maintaining this. Um, and it's, it's beautiful also to see how the team is coming together. All right. So let's talk about um, some good practices. One thing, when you use audio in your app, make sure it's coherent and it's simple. Less is better. So the way you use the sound needs to connect, again, how it is in real life. But also, if you have a specific sound when you have a positive or success note, and one when you have an error state, don't mix them together. And don't have like an errorish sound when you have a success, because you're going to confuse the user. It's, it's easier said than done, but just be cautious on this. Also, as I said before, timing is everything, and devil, devil hides in details. So make sure to look at things holistically and really test things out to make sure it looks like you want. And respect the user context. They might be playing uh, music or a podcast, so you don't want to stop them unless maybe you want to, but in, in each case, just think about it. They might be playing your game in a classroom, so you might don't want to bust it out in the speaker. Um, we've all been there. So, now that we have this, I'm really excited. What's next? React Native Audio API is still fairly new. So we need to finance a few things. So anybody in the community that want to test it, provide feedback, or contribute is very welcome. It's uh, moving at a very, very fast pace. Um, but also, I think, conceptually, it gives us a very solid foundation. As you saw, it's pretty wordy. And I think with this performance lower level um, library, we can build other libraries on top of it that provides a higher level uh, construction so we can build things faster. You know how Expo Audio released the Expo UI library? Why don't we have Expo UI sounds that provide some quick ways to really use sounds in your app? Um, there's a lot of things to think about. I'm sure you'll take it home and, and do a lot with it. I know at Odyssey Music, we're working on building an audio to MIDI API. Right now, our app works with the travel saxophone, which is like electronic sax. But we want to use the, the, the uh, microphone input so we can detect when you play the real sax and have some fun. Uh, it works on web, reporting it to mobile. So if you're React Native Ninja and you want to be a bit more sexy, um, just reach out. Let's collaborate together. I think there's some really awesome things to build. I'm Kim Shua. This is um, the Odyssey Play, so you can scan the QR code and join the waitlist if, if you want to learn how to play the sax. But remember, next time you add the button, please give it a voice. Uh, Thank you very much. I'm Kim Shaw. Keep trading. Uh,